Hi right, gang, what's up? It's Chavez from A12 Guitars. How you guys doing? Well, just want to update you with the Harry project for Kathy Muir. That's the old guitar that um, her father once owned and uh, has been out of commission for a number of years. I'd probably say decades, if anything. Now, I got this guy to a pretty good stopping point and then I let it rest with full tension with the strings. I didn't want to hand it in just yet because I knew something was going to happen and sure enough Harry decided to do one last trick with me to just spite me because he's being a, a bit of a, an old prick. So, <laughs> sorry Kathy, what can I tell you? It's a surly old Scotsman I guess. So here's where we're at right now. Essentially we're, you know, at the finish mark. At least that's what it looks like. So... My bridge is all very nice, very cool, retro, and yet still a nod to the old. All strung up, fingerboard nicely refinished, new nut, nicely carved, good job on me. But what's the drag? Well, for one, the D tuner started to fail and I can feel the high E and the B want to go also. Reason being, these are very economical tuners, even for the period. And these gears just are not holding up worth anything. And as you can see, as I try to turn it, it just doesn't want to do anything anymore. As a matter of fact, it just gets stuck. So, that sucks. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm going to replace them with some, again, economical style tuners, but a little bit of an update. This is the classical style with the uh, plastic shafts. Inside, internally, it's metal. But these are going to hold up a little bit better. And last a little bit longer, so at least, you know, we can give Harry some life for a while. Now, what's going on with the bridge, though? Now, if you guys remember, I told you, old guitars, they tend to collapse in on themselves under tension. Remember, it's being tensed only on one side, so that means that the back has to be extremely rigid, but over time, even the box can flex a little bit. So, this is why I let Harry sit for a little while, and sure enough, his action got a little higher because... The belly of the body here flexed just enough, came up about another millimeter and a half or so. Not dramatic, but it was enough that the string height came up again. Now, again, I let him sit for a while, so this is it. This is as far as we're going. But my bridge had to come down significantly, as you can see. That still looks good. The problem, though, is that the height of my saddle here is now so low that the anchor point of the string, there you go, as you can see, is way too shallow. Now, you guys remember what I told you before? Something called break angle? Well, this has none of it, basically. It's almost dead straight. And as a matter of fact, if you watch closely, we don't want that, because then you get this sound. Hear that buzz? It's actually coming right from the saddle itself, right there, because this is moving. So can this, so can this. So, all right, so what are we gonna do? How are we gonna solve this? Well, basically my anchor point here has to be removed and I'm gonna drill holes straight down so we're gonna use pins just like we would on a standard steel string guitar. It's the only solution because I can't get this low enough to anchor our strings like we normally would a regular classical. So, considering this isn't really a true classical, and on top of that, Harry's being a surly old prick. <laughs> sorry again, Kathy, I'm sorry, I, I can't help it. He's fighting me. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to drill a set of holes right here, so that way I can get really good break angle. So we're going to be looking at something like this now instead which will also improve the, um, the tone of the guitar and also help with sustain. Remember, whenever you have movement of the string where it's moving back and forth or something, you're losing sustain because when you lose vibration, it's over. It's basically like uh, losing horsepower in a car with a slipping clutch. That's essentially what we're having a problem with here. But anyway, so we can still solve them. We're still going to get them up and running right. It's just that, you know, we just hit a little snag. No big deal. And again, this is also a reason why I like working on guitars like this. It makes you think. And it makes you go, okay, how can I solve this problem? And that's what makes a good luthier. you got to solve the problem. Because remember, most important thing, gluing the instrument to the player. 
If you can't manage to do that, you're not doing your job right. Get out. Go work at McDonald's. Have a good day.